Hey, it's Rob. Leave a message. If you're bringing wine, make it white, because we're going all chicken. Juicy, marinated, slow-roasted birds that'll blow you away. Oh, yeah, and some smoked onions and a cool barbecued salad. See you tonight. got some friends coming over today. I've decided to do all chicken. Chicken two ways, wet rub and a dry rub. I'm doing a wet rub right now. I've got a whole chicken on the bone. Why am I using chicken on the bone? Flavor, flavor, flavor. This is a grain-fed, free-range chicken. You get so much flavor from a free-range chicken. It's running around. And if you don't have a free-range chicken, any chicken will do. Fresh garlic always helps, because garlic is the key to all good cooking. It's just a rough chop. You don't have to be exact here. Just have fun. It's a barbecue, and it's all about fun anyways. Mmm, rosemary. You don't have fresh rosemary? Dry will work here. It all works. It all works out in the end anyhow. Now, this is for my little Provencal trick, little French technique. You know, I got to do that once in a while. A little fresh lemon juice. Oh, yep. Mmm. All that goodness. A little white wine. And any white wine will do in this situation. Don't go crazy on yourself. If you can drink it, you can cook with it. Last sip. Whack. Whack. Get that in there. All right. This is a wet rub. And what happens here is that this helps to start breaking down the connective tissue a little bit in your chicken. Tenderizes it for you. All the flavor marrying here at this point. Now. I've got to get this into this plastic bag. And how am I going to do that without making a huge mess? Come with me. This little pot. Let's work here nice and diligently. There we go. Get all that goodness back into this plastic bag. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You can tell the flavor is going to come out very, very well. All right. So this is going to be cooked rotisserie style. Turning over and over and over. Great flavor. Now, not everybody has a rotisserie. You can still do it on the bone. Just have your butcher take out the backbone for you. I did a wet marinade. Now I'm going to do a dry rub. Got some onion powder here. These flavors all work well on the grill. Garlic powder. You don't have to use regular salt. Celery salt. Interesting flavor combination, but it works really well on the grill. A little paprika. Paprika adds beautiful color to this and a beautiful little zip. And mustard, dry mustard. This pulls all the flavors together. Touch sugar. That will caramelize a little bit on the grill. Not too much. 
Remember those lemons I used a little while ago? A little lemon zest. Now, one side is done. Must get that other side. It's going to be on the grill for a while. We've got to get this into our bag. We did the wet marinade for four hours. This also has to marinate. This is our dry rub, and this has to marinate for four hours also. And barbecue's all about prep in advance. Marination, four hours. If you prep in advance, you can make your barbecue dance. So, chicken's marinating. Time for some simple sides. Vidalia onions. Beautiful sweet onion here. Short growing season. And if you don't have a Vidalia onion, any cooking onion, Spanish cooking onion will do. Simple. So I'm just getting the outer layers off. Now the Vidalia onion is one of the sweetest onions you can find out there. It's a beautiful onion to cook with and it goes really well on the grill. My little secret here, come on in. The X. About a half of the way down, just a simple little X. And why am I doing the little X? It's going to look pretty. Okay, time to wrap these in some foil. Little touch of olive oil. Nice, simple little drizzle. Mmm. Beautiful flavor is going to come from this. Rub those in there. Food of love. We rub everything. It's just a beautiful thing. The dahlias, done. Apple time. Smoked apples for our Waldorf salad. A little walnut oil. Now, if you don't have walnut oil, any neutral flavor oil will do with this situation. It's nice and tart. Rub that all in there. And the reason I'm not peeling the skin is because I don't want the flesh to start to discolor. Last little rub, and off to the grill. An essential part to any good barbecuing cold beer. I have apple chips on, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius. I'm waiting for some smoke. It's already happening. I have to work pretty quickly here now. I want to put my onions on and my apples on. Apples on, onions on. My Vidal onions, those sweet onions, they're on right now. 30 minutes have gone by. Want to open them up. A little cola inside. The caramel from the cola will help caramelize. 30 minutes more, and we're done. Just come from the grill. Beautifully done apples. Skin is smoked. Look, at it's just blistered up nicely. Mmm, the onions. They look so nice and they're tender. Mmm, the smell on this is just incredible. You just get these out of the way for now. All right. Let's show all the hard work here. No discoloration whatsoever. So it's smoked. Mm, you can smell it. This is beautiful. Okay, 
salad time. Nice bite-sized pieces here. Want a nice big chunk of apple in your mouth. Celery. This will add another dimension of crunchiness. It's all about layering flavors here. Walnuts for crunchiness. This whole salad is a very crunchy salad. Raisins for my sweetness. A little sugar here. Well. Limes. Three beautiful limes at this point. Juice. Because you don't get a hell of a lot of juice from the limes, so you got to use a few of them. And I have two more ingredients to get here. Yogurt and some mayo. Nice big dollop. Yogurt. Time for the mix. This is going to be a scrumptious salad. So my guests are coming over in a couple hours. Got to get my stuff on the barbecue. Have my dry rub here. That's been sitting for four hours in the fridge. Doesn't she just look beautiful? Now for my wet marinade. Okay. So I want to remove some of that white wine and that lemon juice, because if I have that on, that's going to burn on the grill right away. I don't want that to happen. Now she's done. We got to get her on the grill, but how do I get her to the grill? We've got to get her all together, nice and tight. So I'm going to do a little trussing process here. Very simple. Nobody starts sweating, okay? Very simple process. A little bit of string. Here we go. Try to go halfway through. Do the old knot that we learned in grade one. <laughs> Come up around the sides. Another little tie here. Look at her, she's all bunched up. Beautiful. And get a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Tied nice and tightly here. Trust burn. Now, we still have to get her onto the grill and onto the rotisserie. On about three quarters of the way down, finger tight. Pretty simple stuff so far. Through the cavity. Nice and tight. in it. Want it nice and tight so it doesn't flop on the barbecue. We're ready for the grill now. Rotisserie. On. How easy was that? Drip pan here. Get this on. I have high heat, no heat, high heat. This will catch all the juices, but I'm going to do a little secret here. Let me show you. White wine. I use the same white wine that I marinated the chicken in. Simple stuff here. Little rosemary. Hour and a half. Let the grill do the work. Wow, this bird's been on for about 45 minutes now. It's gonna give it a nice little baste here. 
We've got another 45 minutes and we're done. We're finished here, on to our flatbird. All right, a little splash here of grapeseed oil. Now, the reason I'm using grapeseed oil is because I've used a dry rub. Don't want it to stick. Grapeseed oil, you can grab this anywhere. It's available in all your local grocery stores. Bird on. Now, I have this side nice and high. This side is off. Why do I have this side off? Because all I want is indirect heat at this point. Don't want to scorch my bird. I don't want to burn my bird. So cook it nice and slowly. That's what we're looking for, nice and tender. 45 minutes, it's done. Why does it take 45 minutes? The other one took about an hour and a half because this one is closer to the heat surface. That's it, let the grill do the work. Now, my bird has been on for about an hour and a half. Doing my last little bit of basting on it. I know this bird is completely done at this point. Just want to give it a double check here. And if you're not 100% sure, always use a thermometer. Go in between the thigh and the breast meat. Don't go all the way down to the bone. You don't want to read the temperature of the bone. You want to read the temperature of the meat. I'm at 180 degrees. 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius, you know this bird is done. Out, we're ready to go to the plate. My bird's been on for about 45 minutes. I know she's cooked. I can see the juices are running clear. But another little tip, wiggle those legs. If they start to pull apart, you know she's done. And now for the fun part. Let's remove this old cutting board. I've cut chicken on this raw. It's gotta get out of here. Little tip here, a wet cloth. This will prevent any slipping, working with sharp objects. There we go. Let's slide. So let's untruss our bird at this point. Very, very simple. Snip. Mmm. She smells so good. And for the easy part, or the fun part, cutting our chicken up. Legs off. There's a little H bone in here. One. Just feel in there with your fingers. Once you feel it, right down. Wings. Pretty simple. Now for the breast meat. Follow the keel bone. There's a natural cut that we can make. Keep going all the way down. Just follow bone. If you're hitting bone, you know you're in the right place. Just follow it down. There are natural sp spots in the chicken where you can hit. Perfect breast. Turn it around. Again, follow it all the way down. Just peel it back. Nice and simple. Straight cuts all the way down. Hitting bone again, you're hitting the right spot. Little H bone again. How simple was that? And now for the flattened chicken. Nice and simple. Halfway down, right in half. Beautiful. We're ready for dinner. Oh, 
lot, guys. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>